Welcome to Chinta Statistics and Data Science. Today we are going to solve this problem from ISA MSTAT 2021, problem number 8 from the PSB section. Problem says that let x1, x2, x3 be IID random variables from normal mu comma sigma square and let x bar equals to one third summation xi, p1 equals to summation xi square and p2 equals to 1 by 3 summation xi minus x bar whole square, right? So compute expectation of t1 given x bar and expectation of t1 given t2 and second question obtain the exact critical region of a level alpha test for h0 equals to mu h0 says that mu equals to 0 versus h1 says that mu not equals to 0 that rejects h0 if and only if x bar square by t1 is sufficiently large so let us first concentrate on the first question that is computation of expectation of condi the conditional expectation of t1 given x bar and expectation of t2, t1 given t2. So the sample variance a square is 1 by 2 summation x i minus x bar whole square, right? I running from 1 to 3. This is the sample variance, which is nothing but half into summation x i square minus 3 x bar square. Now that means 2 s square is equals to t1 as it is given. t1 is summation x i square. That means x1 square plus x2 square plus x3 square. So that can, this can be written as t1 and this is 3x bar. So t1 can be written as 2s square plus 3x bar square, right? And t2 obviously can be written as 2 by 3s square since s square is this. So t2 can be written as 2 by 3s square. Now, expectation of t1 given x bar is actually expectation of 2s square plus 3x bar square given x bar, right? That means it is nothing but 2 into expectation of s square given x bar plus 3 into expectation of x bar square given x bar right now since in normal distribution the sample variance and the sample mean are independent therefore expectation of s bar square given x bar is nothing but expectation of s square right the conditional expectation of s square given x bar is the same as the unconditional expectation of s square so this thing this particular thing becomes simply expectation of s square right which means obviously sigma square since we know the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of sigma square right population variance and this expectation of x bar square given x bar since x bar has already been given that means x bar square becomes a constant and therefore this is simply x bar that means ultimately expectation of t1 given x bar is nothing but 2 sigma square plus 3 x bar square it is a function of x bar as we know that conditional expectation the random variable on which we condition on is expectation of that conditional is random variable is actually a function of the random variable right Conditional expectation is not a constant. It is a function of the random variable on which it is conditioned on. So expectation of t1 given x bar is this, right? This one, 2 sigma square plus 3 x bar square. Now, for the next part, expectation of t1 given t2 is actually can be written as expectation of t1 given t2 equals to t, right? Now, twice, it can be written as twice expectation of s square since t1 is nothing but 2 s square plus 3 s x bar square so and t2 is 2 by 3 s square so just i have just written the t1 and t2 in terms of s square and x bar square so ultimately it becomes 2 into expectation of s bar s square expectation of s square given 2 by 3 s square equals to t and plus is there there will be a plus here sorry plus 3 into expectation of x bar square given 2 by 3 s square equals to t, right? So now this part, this particular part here, 2 by th this first part, expectation of s square given 2 by 3 s square equals to t can be written as simply since s square can be written as 3 by 3 t by 2, right? It can be written as that. So if 2 by 3 s square is t, then s square is 3 t by 2, and therefore in that case, this is expectation of s square given s square becomes just s square, right? That means this part, this 3t by 2, and there is 2 outside, so it becomes 3t, ultimately it becomes 3t, right? And again, s square and x bar square are obviously independent, so this simply becomes expectation of x bar square, which is nothing but variance of x bar plus expectation of x bar whole square. Now, obviously, we know that x bar uh, is an unbiased estimator of the population mean, so it's mu square. And the variance of x bar is sigma square by 3s. So this part is easily calculable. And this part, since 
T was originally the value of T2, right? It was original value of T2. So replacing T by T2, it means it is 3T2 plus 3 into sigma square by 3 plus mu square, which ultimately is 3T2 plus sigma square plus 3 mu square. Therefore, expectation of T1 given T2 is nothing but 3T2 plus sigma square plus 3 mu square. It was very easy, just like the previous one. All we needed to do was write T1 and T2 in, in, in terms of the sample variance and the sample mean. And the rest follows very easily. The only thing that might have occurred, some might have caused a bit of a mistake that this is 2 by 3 s squared is equals to t, right? Since t2 is equals to t given as t, that, that means it's 2 by 3 s squared is equals to t. And therefore, we have to, this is s squared is equals to 3t by 2. That is the given value of s squared is not t, but 3t by 2, right? This is the given value of s squared. And therefore, this is the value that comes out of it here. This expected, this entire expectation actually outputs the 3t by 2, not t, 3t by 2. And this part is very easy. This is just easily follows. So we've calculated both the expectation and expectation. So, so part part one is over. Now the, for the part two, it is given that to, to test h0 equals to mu equals to 0 versus h0, h1, as in the null hypothesis says that mu is 0 versus the alternative hypothesis says that mu is not equals to 0. The test is given as reject h0 if and only if x bar squared is greater than x bar squared by t1 greater than k. Right? Here it is said that reject h0 if and only, only if x bar squared by t1 is sufficiently large. That means it you know exceeds some value, some value. We don't know what the value is. We have to find the value, but some value. So let that value be k for the time being so that the test is of level alpha. That means reject h0 if and only if x bar squared by t1 greater than k where k is something that we have to find so that the entire test uh, test becomes a level alpha test right so probability under h0 reject h0 is alpha right since the level is alpha so, so that means probability under h0 x bar squared by t1 greater than k is alpha now under h0 that means under the assumption of h0 is true if if h0 is true that means if mu is zero x1 x2 x3 follows iid normal 0 comma mu sigma square right and therefore x bar follows normal 0 comma sigma square by 3 and therefore standardizing this root 3 into x bar by sigma follows standard normal right very easily it follows very very easily this is all under the assumption of h h naught now squaring this we have 3 x bar square this squaring this part this is this follows standard normal root 3 x bar by sigma and squaring this we follow it follows chi square 1 right square of a standard normal follows chi square 1 this part this part follows chi square 1 now t1 is obviously summation xi square it is, as it is given therefore t1 by sigma square is summation summation i running from 1 to 3 xi square by sigma square now since each of the x1 x2 x3 follows normal 0 comma sigma square therefore x1 by sigma follows normal 0 comma 1 and therefore x1 by x1 square by sigma square follows chi square 1 each of them follows chi square 1 and therefore the sum follows chi square 3 this entire thing follows chi square 3 right each of them follows chi square 1 and their sum they are independent obviously so their sum follows chi square 3 therefore t1 by sigma square follows chi square 3 now probability under h naught x bar square by t1 greater than k just adjusting this entire thing so that we get this these kind of expressions we want to actually uh, make this thing and this thing uh, come into this expression. So, dividing both sides by dividing uh, both the numerator and denominator by sigma square and multiplying 3 on both sides. And after this whole thing, this thing, this 3 x bar square by sigma square whole divided by 1 and this thing whole divided by 3 greater than 9k is alpha. Now, this thing is what? This is chi square 1 divided by 1 and this is chi square 3 divided by 3. And obviously, these two are independent, right? These two. So that means this entire thing follows f1, comma 3, right? f distribution with 1 and 3 degrees of freedom. Now, this thing is actually greater than 9k. This probability is alpha. Therefore, therefore, the 9k is actually f1, comma 3, comma alpha. This is the alpha cutoff point, right? If this is this random variable, this variable which follows a distribution with degrees of freedom one and three greater than nine k is alpha. That means this nine k has to be f one three f one comma three with alpha, right? That means k is one by nine times f one and three with alpha. That means reject h naught if 
x bar square by t1 greater than 1 by 9 into f 1 and 3 comma alpha this is the critical region right this is the critical region so we have the answer all we needed to do was this particular under the assumption of h naught we have to just find the x bar square and t1 square that's it uh, the distribution of each of them right and take this entire thing in some kind of known distribution this entire thing comes into f distribution so we have this alpha cutoff point and ultimately this cutoff point is k becomes this so reject h naught if this is greater than this one that is this is the answer so there you have it the solution to this problem see you till next time